Oh, welcome back to Iowa Live. Lou and Jackie good here. Good morning. Along with a good friend, Craig Robinson, to talk some politics and things that's happening worldwide. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're in the middle of it uh, here in the great state of Iowa. Politicians constantly making their way through, including uh, having another big meeting or gathering last night at Drake University. Yeah. But uh, lots of actions on the Democratic side. We are uh, we know that. But how about the Republican side? There, you're saying there's some things stirring there. Yeah, well. there's, there's all, you know, with the presidential race, there's going to be every day you'll have have something going on in the state with uh, presidential candidates. Right. But uh, on the Republican side, you have uh, a development in the third district congressional race here where it looked like uh, David Young, former congressman who's going to run for that seat again, might have a primary with Zach Nunn, a uh, local state senator. Right. Uh, Nunn announced last night that he's not going to run for Congress. Um, he, and I think, look, I think Zach has a very bright future. And so, um, do you think he had a chance or he, that's what he was doing? Well, I think that there's a, there's other things that happen. I think that, that, happen. that, you know, Zach did his due diligence and, and asked around and everything, but to understand Young's advantage, there was also a poll that came out from the NRCC over the weekend that showed David Young leading uh, Cindy Axney uh, in a head-to-head -head poll. Really? And that's the, the, the difference between David Young and Zach Nunn is the fact that David had been the congressman here for you know four years, right. built name ID, and so people know him. So when you go to you know, and Axney is a, is a newly elected representative and well known, and 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 well known mm -hmm. because she's in Congress. But mm -hmm. David has some advantages there that it, it doesn't matter who a, a new challenger, a new face on the scene would have that you'd have to overcome that. So that's why I thought when David announced that he was going to run again. He's a significant candidate on the mm -hmm. Republican side. So it's good news for Republicans that he kind of has a clear field to run, that he can start raising money and preparing for a general election instead of having to deal with a um, do you think inter party. Do you think that would party. peal off some of his momentum if he had had to fight that well, battle peel, first? Uh, it peels off your your money. Right, that's <laughs> so, it. Yeah. And that's the hard part to mm -hmm. raise. Right. Uh, it takes a lot of money to run for Congress. And so uh, I think David would have been fine in the primary challenge, but it's nice when you don't have one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we saw that with Kim Reynolds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a year right. ago or two years ago. Um, but since we're getting maybe getting rid of one congressional in primary the third in district. the third district, it looks like we might be getting one in the second district. So okay, now where is the second district? The second district is uh, kind of the Quad Cities and Southeast Iowa. It comes all the way over to Jasper County and just oh, south really? of Des Moines too. Okay. It's a big congressional district. Uh, Dave Lope, this is Dave Lobsack's seat. Mm -hmm. uh, he announced that he's not going to run for re-election. Right. And so uh, Rita Hart is the, I think the lone, I think there might be two Democrats running in that race, but she's the, the favorite to be the Democrat nominee. And then for a long time, Republicans were kind of waiting to see who's going to run. Well, now we kind of know uh, Bobby Schilling, a former Illinois uh, congressman, uh, is has moved to Iowa in 2015. He bought land and built a house, and so um, he's in this race. Um, who's he's an interesting candidate because he's he's done it before. He's done the job before. He's run before, but he's not done it in Iowa. I was gonna say, are, will people uh, hold that against him by some, not being some, in Iowa? Yeah, I mean, some could, but again, I think I grew up along the river. And so when you live on a border community, mm -hmm. you're back and forth all the time. Right. And it's you are part of that community, even though you lived on the other side, you represented the other side. Some of the issues might be different, but when you live in a border community, you're, you're cognizant of what's going on. Yeah. And you're and you have connections and you do business. I mean, anyone who lives in Illinois where they buy their gas and buy their groceries where? in the state of Iowa, because mm -hmm. they're taxed less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you're, you're constantly bouncing back and forth. The other candidate yesterday who made a move, she didn't get into the race formally, but Marionette Miller-Meeks, uh, a newly elected state senator, uh, she is gonna run again for the fourth time uh, in this seat. Uh, she's ran three times previously against Vilsack and couldn't get the job done. So with an open seat, it looks as if she's gonna get in this race. So I think we'll have a uh, competitive primary in the second. We already have a competitive primary going on in the fourth district mm -hmm. against Steve King. And the news there is that you had fundraising numbers be released uh, yesterday. Randy Feenstra, his challenger, raised had another strong quarter. He mm -hmm. has 330 some thousand dollars uh, in the bank for his campaign against Steve King. 
King had another disappointing fundraising period. He only has $18,000 to run his reelection campaign. So it's like the roles are reversed here. So that's right? how much he has total is $18,000. $18, as compared which to is, more than a which third won't, of a million dollars. Yeah, which won't do you a thing. Mm -hmm. And so King has a problem here because um, clearly the donors, and 80% of the money that Feenstra has raised has been in state. So it's not like, I mean, this is, King has an issue here. King still has an advantage. He's better known. He's ingrained up there. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been a fixture in Iowa politics for 20 years. But a primary challenger shouldn't be able to do what Randy Feenster is doing, number one. And number two, an incumbent member of Congress shouldn't have a pathetic uh, uh, fundraising quarter like this, especially when he knows he's being challenged. You said that his name is very well known. Do you think that is a, a benefit and also a detriment? Could be. Yeah. I mean, this is you're talking about the most conservative part of the state. And so uh, if this was any other congressional district, I think Steve King would have been gone a long time ago. Uh, but this is the most red congressional district in the state. And, uh, and they have stuck by him. And he really hasn't, he hasn't been challenged in a, in a direct way by a candidate who is out, actually out there fundraising and, and campaigning aggressively. And it's just stunning to me to see pictures on, on Twitter and Facebook of, you know, here's Randy Feenstra at a 4th of July parade, Steve King's nowhere around, and, and Feenstra is with a, you know, someone, another Iowa State Senator. This is what you expect to see an incumbent congressman doing, right? And Feenstra looks and acts a lot like an incumbent, and Steve King is acting like a, a the champ or performing like a challenger without a chance. Do you st think st uh, Steve King might be saying, you know what? Uh, I'm just going to see what happens, and maybe I'm done. Maybe I'm just going to step back, let everybody do all the hard work, and then I'm going to say I've I've already paid my yeah. My dues. I don't think King is wired to walk away like that, not under his own terms. But this is starting to get to be, uh, I mean, if you're looking at the end of the year and Randy Feenstra has a half million dollars in the bank and you're broke and he's going to run a formidable campaign with TV ads, radio ads, and really let people know who he is and build his name ID, mm -hmm. King might have to take a second look at this. Right. It also lets us know that we can get so blindsided by what's happening with the presidential race that we don't want to forget about the other local things that are happening. I have stuff to say. I usually just let Jeff, you know, Jeff have. <laughs> There's some traction <laughs> happening on the Republican side as well. So thank you for being we'll here and Iowa telling us all about it. You're watching Iowa Live here on CWIWA 23. There are lots of great things happening here in our state and our community. We're going to be talking about those next. Don't go anywhere.